this here is a 330 bear trap. One of the more popular traps for going after game. The 330 is a very powerful trap. It's able to take on everything from fisher and otter and beaver all the way up to lynx and wolverine. They are extremely powerful and if a trapper gets their hand stuck in there, there's a good chance of getting their hand broken. The problem being, it's very hard to take this trap off unless you have the proper tools. The proper tools being certain things called trap jaws or trap pliers. Even then, it's difficult to do with just one hand. So, some trappers rely on an old technique using a piece of rope. And we're going to be demonstrating that today. Now the rope that we're going to be using is 550 uh, 200 parachute cord. Uh, practically any cord that's strong enough to do the, uh, to do the job will work. Uh, even in some cases, some natural fibers, though it's preferable that you use synthetic cord like this. The rope should be at least three times the length of the jaws of your trap. In this case, a little longer is even better. Uh, you don't want too long. In other words, if this is as long as my body is, it'll be very difficult to do the job. What we do on each end is we just do overhand knots. You want these loops to be pretty big so that you can fit your mitts and your boots in it. That should be good on this end because I can grab on. The other end probably is going to need, a little bit, uh, need to be a little bit longer. So I'm actually going to add another piece of cord on. Just doing an overhand knot. I'm not going to do a sheet band or anything like that. I'm just doing a simple overhand knot to join them. That ought to be strong enough. That's perfect. That's all I need. Now we're going to go on to the next step and actually get myself in this trap. You didn't actually think I was going to get my hand stuck in there, did you? Alright, well, we tried and of course started to get bruising. Didn't have time to actually film this. So, here's the cord. I'm going to do this all one-handed. One hand behind my back. You're only going to see my right hand. I'm going to take my glove off so you can see it a little better. What you do is you have one large loop on this side and a smaller loop on this side. This loop has to be big enough to fit over your boot. What I do, you tuck it in, preferably on the inside of the trap, so it stays out of the way of everything going on. You weave it in. Take it in, and then bring it up close to the next loop. That's good. You take it, and you go in again from this end, down into there. This is why you need to have enough rope, but not too much rope. You can see I'm trying to have too much rope. There we go. Pull that tight. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Now you're going to see me actually pull this thing with just one hand and one foot. So, this is going to be my trapped hand, my right hand, my strong hand, which can make this an issue. Loop is over that boot and on my left hand. There are different ways of being able to clamp this rope because eventually you have to be able to get over here to set this spring. You have to uh, put this latch over the spring. You can't do that while you're pulling like that. That's the trick that we're going after. You can't do this and set it with your left hand or the hand that you're pulling with. So, one method you can do is have a branch behind you that you can hook this onto and just pull with your foot. That's a really good way of doing it. If you're not in your trees like I am right now, you can use your teeth, which is what I'm going to try to do. Be aware that if you're not careful with this and you're not ready or the rope slips or the spring gives or something goes wrong, you're probably going to lose a tooth. So be ready to talk to the tooth fairy afterwards. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay. There's the one done. Keeping your hand outside. You unweave this end. Might as well keep that one on your boot because it's one of the more difficult parts to do is actually getting this over your boot. Then, you go to the other one. And again, weave it in. Get it nice and snug. Bring it in again. Now, during all this, you're probably going to be in a lot of pain. It does really hurt to get your hand caught in this thing. And probably you're going to uh, have a broken uh, finger bone somewhere. Now, this one you don't necessarily have to lock on, which makes this a little bit more beneficial. 
so you don't have to use your teeth this time. However, just to explain again what I was talking about when you're looking over my shoulder. If we have a tree back here that I've cut down to a little stake sticking out, I can pull this rope back and drop the loop over it and that will let me be able to lock everything in place. If you don't have that, you pull back and bite on. And again, slow and steady. If you try and jerk this fast and get this going fast and let go too quick and you're not really locked on with your teeth, that knot right there, or the knot that could be up here or even the loop can snag onto a tooth and yank it right out of your mouth. And anybody that's had a tooth pulled can say, without anesthesia, it hurts. So, because we already got that one locked open, this one doesn't have to be locked open because now the jaws will be free. So what you do is you pull and try as carefully as you can to pull your hand out. Now, it is suggested that pulling it out with broken finger bones could cause more damage. However, that's the only way you can get it out, do it. And that's how you get your hand out of a trap.